My name is Vicky Evans and I work for Arup. So Arup are a multidisciplinary engineering and design consultancy. We have 11,000 staff working in 39 countries and our jobs are across the STEM sector. Our founder, Ove Arup, back in the 40s, said if we can find a place for our workforce, whether they are a man or a woman, then we are home. And we, as Arup, help to shape a better world with this kind of diversity in mind. Really, from the very start, our graduates, our graduate intake is, I think it's 41% of our staff are female graduates from quite a small pipeline of, I think it's a pool of 20%. So we really do try our best to get women involved in STEM subjects. And partly we do this through lots of schools engagement. We send our senior women into schools so that we can uh, spread the word about how great it is to be in STEM subjects. We also take on a number of apprentices. I think this year we've taken on 60 apprentices and 10% uh, of those are women and that's, a, and that's a first for us. And these are in the, the building services sector. It's important for us that our clients see that we have a diverse workforce, that we have women to represent us to clients. We have um, a female leadership team now at 20%. This has been steadily rising over the last few years. It's important to us at Arup that we have a diverse workforce to make sure we live the values that our founder, Ove Arup, wanted in our firm, to make sure that our work reflects the communities we work in. So we're passionate about it at Arup, and um, we hope in the future we won't have to have this conversation about why we want women in STEM. It will just be we want the best people in STEM. I feel passionate about spreading the word about women being in the STEM sector. I've worked for Arup for 10 years within a very, you know, traditionally heavily male-dominated environment, heavy engineering, heavy infrastructure sector. And I feel I bring a real difference to the table, whether it be at a board level conversation or whether it be at a project level conversation. And I bring this difference, my gender, but also my background, my education. And it's important to me, and I think that you cannot do a good job on a project unless you bring difference and uh, diversity to decision making. I think that at Arup we value this. We are ready to make sure that all of our projects have a, a wide variety of staff from all backgrounds, whether it be women, whether it be ethnic minorities, different ages, because bringing difference to a project will make the difference to a great project or an amazing project. I think it's the founding of our women's network that's made the most impact and difference. We've really seen over the last five years, um, from the start of the network when it was founded, to bring women together in an environment where um, they could network internally and externally and develop professionally. We've held internal events. Most recently we had a speed mentoring programme and it's an example of how our sort of network is developing our staff professionally, giving our women confidence and developing them maybe in the soft skills that you don't get in the everyday workplace. We also have external events as well. We have speakers come in and speak. Fiona Wolfe, uh, the, the uh, Mayor of London, recently came to speak about her experience. And really I think that it's brought people in that are not negative, but it challenges stereotypes about women. We have senior champions, senior men that come to the events. They're not just for women. And I think it's really starting to break down the barriers where men think they can't participate in these kind of conversations because they don't bring anything to the debate. It's really started to change the organisational culture at Arup. Um, I really think it's been a great impact. Coming up in the next few weeks, we have a, a workshop on unconscious bias where we're doing some um, analysis around how that affects our decisions um, in the workplace and how it can affect your recruitment. Uh, we've got some you know, senior men and women coming to that. And then also, in a few weeks' time, we're not shying away from the debate. We're having a debate with our chairman attending on do we need a step change on our group board, on the gender split between male and females on our board and we're having a, this house believes there should be a step change, and we're having opponents to, uh, for and against. So it's going to be a lively debate, but we're not shy to stay away from those kind of 
debates. I think the best way of persuading people to change their behaviour partly um, is through um, subtly addressing issues. We hold a course called Inclusive Leadership. 450 of our leaders have been on this course and it's looking into things like unconscious bias. How much does it affect your judgment when somebody walks into a room? Have you made your mind up already about that person within the first few seconds thanks to some biases you might not be aware of? I think that kind of training, making people understand maybe that they do perhaps have a bias that they didn't realise before. I think, as I said previously, about the networking events, bringing people along who may before might have been a bit reticent, thinking they can't bring anything to a debate because maybe they don't relate to the issues that, that women might have in the workplace. I think it's making sure that you spread the word that it's about making a difference using those networks where you can really start to change things within, within the culture of an organisation. And it's, it's harnessing that kind of energy from that kind of typical, we call them stale pale males in our organisation, and really getting them to understand that to value difference is so important from a business point of view, and without it, we're not going to be future forward looking. And we are getting there, and I am positive about the future, as we have seen change happen so far.